Greetings and welcome to Behind the Curtain. Here in Behind the Curtain, we're going to look at the world of community theater and in some cases, theater in general. I'm your host, Susan Harrington. Today we're being joined by Vivian Lou Summers. Vivian is an actress and a playwright. Welcome, Vivian. Hi, how are you? Great. Nice to see you. You too. <laughs> and I've directed too. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. So let's, how did you, I, I guess I want to start because I know most of the things I've seen you in or dealt with you have been in terms of acting, but how did you get into playwriting? Because you're doing things with a certain group, but I'll let you go yeah. into that. <laughs> so I, I started, um, well, I started playwriting specifically because I was angry. I was angry about a, a, a white woman playwright who asked me to be in her play, um, to, to, or to read her play. It wasn't, you know, it was just a reading. And um, it, the character she wanted me to be, she wanted to make a statement about, um, uh, she wanted to make a statement about health care in the United States versus health care in, in China. So she had, the, the character she had written was a Chinese nurse who was bumbling and had an accent. I mean, specifically it said, you know, bumbling has accent, I don't know, like, like other things. And it was like, it was supposed to be, you know, anyway, I, so I got mad because it's like, what is this, <coughs> what is this role? And I, and actually she and I kind of exchanged things. And so I, uh, long story short, I didn't do it. Uh, but then I kind of got me thinking about the times I have been typecast or not even, not even typecast specifically in casting, but just like, it, not just me, but just like how, how people put you in a box. And it's like, okay, you look like this, so this is what you should be doing. So I wrote a play, my first play was called, is called Waiting for Kim Lee. And it was two Asian American actresses waiting in the casting um, room uh, to be called for a commercial where they were like the generic mom for some, you know, like uh, Nutra, some Nutra brain bar or something. And so I wrote it about, um, these two women talking about, you know, how they're being, you know, being typecast and basically how they are, the roles that the dream roles that they had were all roles that had been written by white men, dead white men, like, you know, Lady with Beth or Julia, <coughs> you know, Ju Juliet or, you know, all these things that are just like, these, these are, you don't have to limit where you are. So I started that there <clears throat> and then I started, I joined, um, a group, uh, I, I had been part of other readings from playwrights that were Asian American, and they had started a group called the Asian American Playwright Collective. And so I started, and it's been Massachusetts or you know Massachusetts based, mostly Massachusetts based playwrights that um, are trying to further the Asian American voice and experience. So everybody's Asian American, and the and most of the time we're writing about our experiences, or you know, or not always, but you know. So it's been a great experience. And um, so I started, like I said, I started with that Waiting for Kim Lee. And then um, every year we put on a play fest and I've written for, you know, for most years. And it's like we've had, this has been our sixth year. We just did our sixth year. Uh, we perform in, in the um, Starlight. Um, we perform every, many places in the last few years. We've started a Starlight Square in Central Square. And, um, and we, I've been really lucky that to find this group of people and, and to be able to bring my, put my, put my voice in there out there with everybody. So. And so have you, so for each, because I went this summer mm -hmm. and of course I get to the door and they go, it's canceled. Oh yeah. The, the weather. Yeah. The, it was raining. So, yeah. oh, um, cause I was surprised that I had never heard of it before. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And it, and, and it was funny because Michelle Gillian says to me, well, of course, you know, she talked to me like, you know, you know, snow is white, you know, blah, blah, blah. it was like something that I had heard. I'm like, what are you talking about, Michelle? So <clears throat> I got to, like, yeah. I had made a real big effort to get out there and I kept calling and they kept saying they were going to have it. And then I got to the door for the yeah, outside. It was place, a really, it, it was, a, yeah, this particular, we had two nights, we had two, uh, yeah, two nights and, um, uh, or two week, I don't know, it was just two nights. And the first night was fine, it was Friday, and then Saturday it was just like one of those rainy, it was, it was kind oh, of yeah. like, was Freezing. it rain, was it gonna rain? And and they just made the call like minutes before we were supposed to but, open. But I mean, you, you, have you written something for each of the years? So in other words, you have this six pieces out there with well, your I, name I, on Well, I didn't, I didn't start writing till like the second or third year. Oh, so okay. I have, I have the, I've written like five plays. Oh. You know, and they're all short 10 minute plays. I'm actually thinking about a piece that um, I, it's still in my head, but it's you know talking about um, 
my, my idea is to have uh, characters cleaning out two Asian American, the sisters that are cleaning out um, their parents, and I think it's probably their mother's house. Um, it's, it sounds like appropriate, but it's not like Brendan Jacob, Brandon Jake, Jenkin Jacobs, but it's a little, it's my spin on it. So I, but I haven't written it and it, it may be longer than 10 minutes because there might be more to it than that. So. Oh, wow. It's great. So, okay. Then I was just going to say, one of my thoughts was, where do you get your ideas for your place? Which you kind of told me it's trying, you want to share that experience and you don't want to do it. And correct me if I'm wrong in a stereotype stereotypical way yeah I well I think a lot of but, our uh, I mean not to speak for everybody but a lot of the plays that we write about that and, well, I mean my particular inspirations are just kind of sometimes we have prompts so like one year we talked about let's some everybody write something about food or some everybody write something about um, oh. family um, and <clears throat> so we, we sometimes we have prompts and that helps and just sometimes it's just you know just day-to-day -day, um, things um, one, I wrote this one play. It was uh, our theme was dreams, and and I think nightmares because there were a couple of nightmare plays. And my dream play was called Dream Fairy, and it actually had nothing to do with with um, race, but it it actually the dream <laughs> the dream fairy idea came to me in my dreams, where there's a woman who's sleeping, and this this dream fairy comes to her, and um and rhymes everything that the dream fairy says is in rhymes in couplets and and um and like the first few lines of the dream fairy just came in my my dream i literally i woke up and i wrote them down it's like you know i'm your dream fairy don't be scary you know i'm not scary i'm your dream fairy you know i'm here to i can't even remember what i wrote but it was just it was so much fun and and um and i wrote it for two people usually you might have very small plays though Oh, uh, anyway, um, so I wrote that, and it just, like I said, it literally came to me in a dream. Another play I wrote, I actually kind of collaborated, I collaborated with a couple other people. This was during COVID, and we, um, Asi the Asian American Playwright Collective, we had a joint uh, virtual event with um, PAPA, which I think is the Philadelphia Asian Pacific American oh. uh, Collective, and we, I, I was pa paired randomly with three other people, and we decided to write a a play that was more like a skit, and it was called um, "So You Think You Can Win Grandma's Love," and and that was actually uh, there was four characters, and the idea is that this grandma who she, every night she pits her granddaughter and grandson to, to like who who loves me more, <laughs> and then the mother is like the game show host. Oh, so okay. that was just it was kind of I I mean it started in that um, that collaborative event. So but but I kind of I took it and I wrote you know, the whole thing out. So it was, that was fun. So it's like, it's it just random where inspiration comes. And I think actually just can come from wherever you, what you know, and you know, what you, and, and like I said, it started through me being angry, but it just has been a good outlet. And sometimes that's kind of having that kind of impetus because it gives you that fire to, right, to right. move beyond. You might've had something in your head, oh, that sounds it, but then that just put, kind of pushed yeah. you off the, so, yeah. okay, so, how long have you been doing this because you have children that are, yeah. they're not children anymore. They're not, they're, 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 adults. they're, they're adults, yeah. They're grown-ups. Yeah, but, and I'm they trying think to, they're adults. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of when I first encountered you, what what show it was. Joined at the Head. No, I think it was before that. You auditioned oh, for- Oh, that's right, that's right. Yes, I, yes, I did, You auditioned that's right. for something, I was very disappointed you weren't cast. Um, it, and that was a, quite a while ago. Oh, that's right. That was before I was. That was before I was married. Actually, really? I think, I think it was like two nineteen ninety. No. Two thousand. I got married in two thousand. Oh, really? Nineteen ninety. Oh, okay. Nineteen ninety-eight. But I was, you know, I was just a teenager. So, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> as you, as were you. Yes. But um, yeah. Actually, that that goes. That actually, that experience is something I talk about in stereotyping because. Okay. I mean, if you if you don't mind me mentioning it, yeah. you know, because yeah, that's right. That's where I first met you because I auditioned for a play, and um, and when I didn't get it, which is fine, you know, like that, that happens. The director called me directly and said, "You, I have to tell you, you were the best person for this role, but I can't cast you because it's set in the 1950s, and I can't have an Asian woman doing this role." And I said. And at the time, I was like, oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But then, after, you know, like years later, it's like, wait a minute. Why couldn't you have? You know, th obviously, this is way before Hamilton. This is way before oh, yeah. there was non-traditional casting. And now it's not, 
you know, I, I mean, I think most people wouldn't bat an eye, but at the time it was, it was flattering. But then in retrospect, it's like, well, why can't you? Why because, you well, you know, because typically the way they did things is the, the director would call everyone to tell them that, you know, ask them if they would take a role and that tell if they would. And I had the dubious distinction of calling everybody that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and your name was in that pile. I was very sad about it, but it, it was taken from me and said, I want to call her specifically. I want to call her myself. Because I had to call something like 80 people. Yeah, I mean, and that's, <laughs> and actually that's not even done anymore. People. people don't even really call. Yeah, oh, I, I mean, this is way before, I, maybe, I mean, there was email, but it was like, you know, it wasn't. People didn't, yeah. But it so, wasn't common, so. Well, and they didn't think that they thought it should, you should have a personal touch, but when you had, I had to, it was 80 people auditioned for that, 79 or 80 people auditioned for that show, and I had to call 60 of them. Right. Yeah. I had a little speech that was down pat. I was praying people wouldn't answer because I could do it on the <laughs> answer machine. Hi, blah, 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 click. Uh, you do, know. I don't even think people do, don't even do that anymore. No, maybe, they don't. Maybe, Many you, of them you, don't. You, like, you just get like, maybe if you're lucky, you get an email. Yeah. But sometimes you don't even hear. Oh, really? Wow. Well, I mean, actually, that's more like commercial theater. Yeah. But, but, yeah. Okay, so then um, what advice would you give someone, and maybe because you're, and I'm saying this, Maybe it's not fair because you have written things under with with the perspective of an Asian person. Or, would, or do you look at things? You know, what would be an advice you would give someone starting out in playwriting? I, I think so. I, I alluded to it before. It's like I would say start with something you know. Um, I, I actually encourage everybody, even if you don't plan to do anything with it. I think I encourage people to write something because. Uh, and I know I, 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 I've seen, you know, I, I know people that are, have been frustrated, especially a woman as you age and you want to do theater, community theater, whatever, and there are not as many roles or you're, there's not as many slots. And I've told people, write something for yourself. Do something that makes you happy. And I'm not necessarily writing for myself, but I think to, to start, I think write what you know. Think about what you want to say. Or, you know, maybe, or maybe you just like put your thoughts on a paper and just go, you know, I, I mean, I guess it doesn't have to go anywhere. It may, it might be, um, and, and I can tell you in, in a minute, I can tell you about what you want to do if you want it to go somewhere. But I think it's very, I find it pretty, pretty therapeutic to write, write, sit down and write. And, and, um, and there are organizations and groups in the, you know, in the greater Boston area that are dedicated to trying to, to cultivate and curate and help um, young or not not young necessarily but like emerging playwrights um, especially playwrights of color so you know there's the Boston Playwrights platform the Playwrights um, Theater that you it's a nominal fee and I think you can join and you can have your um, they have resident actors I'm a resident actor and you can um, have your play and you can ask some people to read it and you can hear it you know and, you, and there's actually an audience and I, I think people that just go to those and listen to, you know, you just want to hear, and they give you feedback. They mm. say, well, what do you think about that? And then there's um, there's also a lot of groups that are, like Fresh Ink just um, released their um, their uh, application for um, emerging playwrights, and and one is based on Asian American playwrights, and then there's another about, you know, queer and LQ, LGBTQ stories and then there's none just toward less like anybody who's just trying to look uh, company one has a playwright fellowship there i mean there's a lot of groups that have they're trying to encourage you to um to to nurture you know your playwriting skills oh wow i didn't know about that because i there's there's a little it's funny there's a little being of an idea that i have and i've told uh do you know lou fuoco Oh yeah, Lou. Yeah, I know. I, love I know. I've, I love Lou. Yeah, and I've, I've I said, directed him in many. I, okay, and I there's this piece, and I, and I said to him, Lou, when I thought about this, it's a two character piece. I thought about you first. I said I'd love for you to be in it. He goes, Well, write it, honey. Write it. You know. That's right. I mean, that's what that's what an actor wants to hear. It's like yeah. I thought of you when I wrote this, right? So of course, um, it's write it. Do it, Susan. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, even if it's just for you. Do it, yeah. but I'm happy to. If you write something, I'm happy to look at whatever okay, you write. Okay, great. You heard it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I mean, that's another thing. It's like you, whatever you write. If you once you get into a place where you feel like you want to hear mm -hmm. how it sounds, 
have your friends. I mean, you can do like the formal, pla you know, the ba Boston Playwrights platform, like I talked about. But or you could just you you know you know plenty of people. You could just say, Vivian, hey, can you li read this? And I just want to, you know, maybe like have people in your living room and just you know like a two person and just Lou and whoever yeah. sit down. I just want to hear you read it. And and it's you know it's part of it can be very informal. But then they're obviously the more polished you get, the more formal it can be. Yeah. Oh, well, because what I'm wondering is, that, for example, one thing that we did together most specifically, I know you've done things at AFD and I was on the board, but I didn't, wasn't directly, you know, affiliated with uh, Avenue, I was Avenue, at, Q. Avenue Q, yeah, yeah. but when we did Joined at the Head, right, that's right. that had the three main characters and then it had what I call the Greek chorus because right, it was right, yeah. the other four or five people were different folks. Right, that's right. Yeah. What, what are some of the favorite things that you've done in, you know, that you've enjoyed doing? You mean just, just in, general? in general? Just in general. I, well, I've really, um, so I think part of, this is right before I started writing plays, but uh, one, of the, um, one of the best experiences I've had was um, uh, when I was growing up, Joy Luck Club was the book that, that everybody was reading, you know, and especially it was like an Asian American story about Asian American mothers and daughters specifically. And, and it was just, it resonated with me. I watched the movie. I loved the movie. I took my mother to the movie and she's like, oh, those stories. Everybody knows those stories. <laughs> but anyway, so, so then the, um, there was a play version written of it. And a few years ago, Michelle Aguilon, who a good friend of ours, um, directed the version and it was at, um, at the umbrella right. at the time. So I was very fortunate to be um, cast as one of the mothers. And it was an all Asian, an all Asian cast. We had, actually we had Nick Miller, he was our one, <laughs> one white guy. But every, you know, it was all Asian cast. And that really started my, I mean, I had, I had worked with Asian American actors before in Boston, but that was like really where it was, we, we put this full length production up. And, and we had, we, had we ate a lot <laughs> we, we as we always do and we um we had great um a great time and i think we told a, a really compelling story I mean, it was sold out the whole time the whole run we'd had three weekends or something and we it was sold out the whole run because i think it was really it was resonating and i remember i would go out after the show and i would talk to people and sometimes it was like you know friends and it's nice to you know but then i saw this young um little girl maybe she was 10 or so and her mother and the little girl, the mother said to me, my daughter thought you were, you know, she were her favorite character. I said, well, that's really sweet. So do you know, who do you know in the cast? She said, and the mother said, I don't know anybody. I just knew that this was a story. I loved this story as a kid, so I wanted to bring her to it. And she was really, it was, it's just, it was so, it was, it was so gratifying because it was, it validated that there were these valuable stories that, that people wanted to hear and see, and there were people that could perform it because I think that was one of some and you can ask Michelle if you ever have her on your show I think that was one of her um, things that she you know feedback she got and originally is like can you find people and can you find good people and she's like yes and yes and it was it was a really wonderful experience so that started really kind of my I mean I had like I said I had worked with people before but this was that started me on the journey of of really working with um, all these wonderful Asian American actors Kai Choi um, or Kai Chow and, and um, Christina Chan and Michelle and Hortense Gerardo is a playwright we worked with and I mean just a, just all these wonderful folks that have these stories and, and um, are sharing you know these visions and I've worked with Kai as he's been my husband several times <laughs> but he's directed me um, and and Christina I've been in her pieces and I you know she was my and she was one of the other mothers, and she we had a great scene where we were making, we coordinated it. We were making, um, miming, making fortune cookies. So we call each other our fortune cookie buddies. And so there, it just started us. And then, and then from the the AAPC, the Asian American Playwright Collective, these play fests, we every year we cast you know these wonderful Asian American. A lot of them very emergent. A lot of them became have gone on to be Equity and moved to New York or L.A. or on they're on Law and Order and stuff. You know, like all these we we. We had an opportunity to work with so many great people, and there's so many that are still around. You know, there's just a lot of, it's a great community. Wow. And you know what, what's nice is, I've had people say to me, well, 
they perceive it as being like a kind of a closed and racist thing. And I said, but you know, there's groups that don't see themselves. So this group, as with some others, mm -hmm. have made this concerted effort. And so we know where now, in some cases, a group or a body of those people are because I've said some things here at ACMI that maybe we could do something at using the stage at AFD to do some of you guys' plays. That'd be, we would love it. So I then mean, I said to Michelle, so do we know any Spanish groups? Because <laughs> I yes, want to try to, you know. Yes, there's a Teatro Ch uh, Chelsea is, um, they have, I, I could link you with people that okay. are involved in, um, in Latin American stories. So. Oh, okay. And see, that's what I would like to yeah to to see to see happen because as you were saying, there's all there are a lot of children who I know from having been a teacher that there's certain books that kids don't they're not aware of or they right. they don't see themselves in them you know so, right that's right yeah so and it was it was it was so I was so touched by that story with the the, the mother and her daughter because. The, I mean, obviously the mother, like me, grew up with the, you know, Joy Luck Club and it was something that, that was part of her childhood mm -hmm. or her, you know, young adulthood and then bringing her daughter to it and so that she could see that, you know, it, I, I was so moved by that. And, and there are a lot of great groups in Boston that are, you know, you know about French Porch, Front Porch Collective that has had a partnership for the last few years with Huntington and they put, just put on Fat Ham and... Um, uh, K-I-S-S-I-N-G and at the Huntington and they have you know they do a lot of great work and there is Teatro Chelsea that is based in Chelsea that um, does work with the Apollinaire Theater. Okay, the Apollinaire I've been to a couple of times. Yeah right. And seen some things yeah, there. Yeah and there's yeah. um and I I know we, you know we have there there there's so much more that we could do and we're just I think we're all Actually, Front Porch has done, done is much more mature. They've done a lot because of that partnership. But Chung Stage, actually, I should mention Allison Chi, who is um, the um, director and um, founder of Chung Stage, which is a, I think, maybe one of the first bilingual Mandarin Chinese um, English um, focused, you know, um, play groups out there and she's done a lot of great work. She just produced Christina's work. Rosanna Alfaro, who is one of our playwrights in the Playwright Collective, um, has was one of the first people. She's she's 80 plus years old. She's like the sharpest attack. And she was one of the first people that had her work done professionally and, and you know in the Boston area. She I think like early work was done at the Huntington and she was a Huntington playwright fellow. And um, so, there, I mean, that's like I said, there's generations of people. And we have Jamie Lynn, who's an, another playwright that is in our group that is, um, she's had her work done by the Boston Theater Marathon. She was part of Christina's uh, recent play that was done put on uh, by Chunk Stage. So there's, there's just a lot yeah. of great groups out there. So that, as I say, that having been said, uh, what are some of the roles that you like to perform? Well, I, so I, I, I mean, I could say the things that like I would, you know, I would love to do Lady Macbeth at some point, you know, written by that dead white guy. But um, I think actually the thing, the roles I pref would love to perform have not yet been written oh. or they're not out yet out, you know, out there. I love being in my fellow play playwrights plays because I really feel like I hope I'm help I'm giving doing justice to what they're trying to do to, to convey I've been in a couple of Jamie's plays I've been in a couple of Christina's plays I've been in Hortense's um, Michelle has directed me Michelle has been in a, my she was in waiting for um, Kim Lee with me um, Allison actually directed my the first production of that so I I feel like there's I mean, I, I'm not saying that I'm going to necessarily write it, but I think that there are things that are out there that I don't even know about yet. Oh, okay. That's, that's I don't want to, what am I trying to say? That's encouraging. Yeah, that's and encouraging. I think and I think that there are also opportunities to, uh, Michelle and I have talked about doing an all, all Asian version of, um, of, of some of the other plays that are out there, like Three Sisters or, um, yeah, or uh, Osage County or something, you know, something that's yeah. traditionally been white yeah. and, and doing a different spin. I know that there was a group, theater group, and I can't remember the name of it, that just recently did um, uh, God of Carnage with, and it was in with four Asian, I think it was actually, it wasn't Allison's group, but it was another group that, Vermilion Theater, I think, that did it with four Asian actors and they might have actually actually done it in Mandarin, I can't uh -oh. remember. I could be wrong, but like I'm saying, like there's opportunities. And that's, that. I mean, 
I saw the ver I saw the production that Michelle directed, and it was amazing. Yeah. So who's to say that it couldn't be done yeah, that way? That's I right. mean, I don't know if I would go see that one because I don't understand Mandarin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I think they had a. Uh, I actually I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know. I just know yeah. that they had this this group that that had four Asian actors who did God of yeah. Carnage, and it, but they said it. I think in in. Um, an Asian American community that they were playing, you know, so it was very true to their story, and and it translates because it's like well, overprotective parents and you know all the class yes. struggles and things like that. So yeah. So then, okay. I I, I was going to ask what your my what was going to be my standard final question is what on your bucket list is, but you told me it hasn't been written yet. And not, so. no, not necessarily. I think that there's just like there's I think there's so much more potential that that we. I, I don't. I don't think. I think the the great thing about Hamilton and others things is like it's really opened people's eyes yeah. to. You don't have to be traditional in your casting. You don't have to have the dead white guy being paid by you know a white guy or or whatever you know. So it's. I I think. Um, yeah. I mean, bucket but, list is. So when I last minute tell me. How do hubby and the youngins feel about what you do? <laughs> um, well, it I. I, my kids t haven't always seen everything I do. My, my, I don't know. It's, it's really funny. One time I was, came back from a business trip. I was in New York for like a week and my, I came back and my son's like, oh, you were away on a business <laughs> trip? I thought you were in rehearsal all week. And I said, no, <laughs> I was not, I literally was not here. You know, um, I, they, 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 I like, they think, you know, they, they're, I think they like it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, but they haven't. My my husband has seen most of my stuff, but yeah. not my my kids because they're not around. Because you were doing this before you two met, right? That's right. So he had to buy into it. I mean, he had to like... buy into it. That's right. He saw me when I, I did. Um, uh, what did I do? Uh, I did um, the uh, House of Blue Leaves. I did it <gasps> at Footlight. Oh, right. And he saw. I was. Oh, I was. Um, I was one of. The, I had none. That's right. I forgot. I was I, I was the box office then. That's right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. It's been so. It's, so it was actually before, before um, Iguana. Then that was a heck of a. It was Bill Dosh that directed that, and Candace was in it. Yeah. 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 She was amazing. Yeah, Bill Dosh was a great. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, we go back a long time. Yes. Oh my goodness. Because we started as teenagers. Yes. And well, I mean, Gabby was in the third grade. Yes. She did the Crucible at Foot Like Love. Yes, yes, Michelle grade. and I, you, we, we have a long history because she and I would always read for the same show. Roles, yes, so. I know. Well, thank you for joining us and here and Behind the Curtain. I'm Susan Harrington, and our guest was Vivian Lou Summers, and playwright, actress, and terrific mom, and everything. Thank you so thank much, Thank you Vivian. so much. This is so much fun. Thank you. Fly, time flew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>